What is going on ladies and gentlemen, Horcrux here and welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we are going to be reacting to Deltius S tier, God tier, Dragonite PvP build for the Lost Eps DLC. Now being a Dragonite specific channel, you guys know I have to watch it. So does Deltia actually know what he's talking about boys or is Horcrux going to spend the next 20 minutes of his time ripping Deltia a new one? Nah, let's find out. And before we jump into the full live reaction of Deltia's PvP build, guys, I just want you to know, thank you all so much for helping me hit 10k subscribers. It's been a long road. We've been through a lot. Much appreciated. And if you guys want to know when I go live, just hit the like, subscribe button, and also hit the bell notification icon because YouTube just simply will not notify you unless you do so. I actually do stream two or three days a week. I've tried to do more uh, depending on work. So without further ado, guys, uh, let's do it. I'll be doing a mix of PvE and PvP in the Elder Scrolls Online. Here we go. All right. I like his intro, though. Let's go over skills first. In front bar, I go with dual wield. Now, there's a couple different options of what you can go with on your front bar. Dual wield may... Okay, so looking at this, I think this is a pretty solid front bar. Um, yeah, this is pretty solid front bar. Um, I'm assuming he's writing play break in this. Because, you know, there's play break. So, off to a good the start. The reason I go dual wield, I cannot stand dizzying swing. Dizzying swing drones, you know who you are. Can't stand it. So, I go <laughs> dual wield with whirling blades as my big AoE execute in my predominant main spam bolt along with fully charged dual wield attacks. I don't see People said this was bad. Main spam bolts, I try to dodge in, get in, get a kill, and get out, and then re-engage. That's why I go dual wield. Now, if you want the 2H play style, all you have to do is swap out to a 2H. Me a mole and then put dizzying swing in my five key which is whirling blades basically the only change you need to make this if you like the dizzying swing setup and that's the change i would make for a duel but can keep in mind i go for big huge i mean right now he's running play break i don't know what he has on his back bar because I, I really can't tell yet um yeah i mean his bar setup is great i, I people tell me this is bad what, what's going on I think, and that's Noxious Breath. This is AoE Conal in front of you, hard hitting and gets stealthers out of stealth. Yeah. And it gives major breach, so reducing the resistances, increasing your damage, it costs stamina. It's a fantastic ability all around. Keep in mind, it lasts 24 seconds. He's running Ice Staff as well, dual will, man. Has Delta been watching the channel? Holy shit. It might feed into Mara's Bomb, which is a very heavy survivability set. Haha! <laughs> But mainly I'm not using it for the poison proc damage. I'm mainly using it for the major breach. Along with poison His resources and though. Oof. Effect, possibly. Big oof. So that's why I got Noxious Breath on the front bar. Next ability up is a Flames of Oblivion. A lot of reasons to use it. Um, I actually disagree with Take Flight. Um, I think Ferocious Leap is just better. Because the Overshield will save you so often. Yeah, Take Flight does do more damage. But I, I just think that Ferocious Leap is just... just Always better, in my opinion. Molten Whip. It got changed, kind of a goofy change. So it's half magic, half stamina. This really isn't a problem for a hybrid PvP build, more of a PvE issue. Yeah, that is actually a really interesting idea that they did with Whip. Um, I actually kind of enjoy it. That does maximum, you know, it requires magic and stamina. So uh, kudos to Zoss for uh, innovation on that one. So with this build, that's a fantastic change. We typically don't want to use this as a main spamble, but as a filler. This guy's kind of seeing like potatoes, to be honest. This is kind of like our finisher big pressure, and we want to get three stacks up. So anytime you cast an Ardent Flame ability, you get a stack. Well, Noxious Breath and Flames of Oblivion can be cast out of combat without a target. So actually, you want to keep these three stacks up Good at points. all times. Good points. So that way, when you are ready to whip, bang, you have it ready. And then on the front bar, we have uh, Shattering Rocks. This is the other morph of Fossilize. It's our control mechanism. This costs a lot of magic, but they can't block or dodge this stun, making it absolutely fantastic. The other morph Fossilize has an immobilization component to it as well. Very, very strong. If you don't feel like you need extra healing, go with Fossilize. Me, I love being tanky, and this does give you a little bit of healing when the stun ends. Um, one thing he should note is when you cast, um, I believe it's Ardent Flame Abilities. I, no, it's not Ardent Flame Abilities. It's Earthen Heart Abilities or whatever. You actually restore stamina. So uh, every time you cast Fossilize, even though it costs like 3,000 Magicka, you actually get 1,000 stamina. So things like that. I'm very surprised he hasn't mentioned Ash Cloud yet. Ash Cloud is probably like your, your best skill um, on the DK, to be honest. 
So it allows me to keep throttling down and applying pressure, kind of like I did on my Magpar. His stand well, before really they low. gutted sweeps and jabs. So that's why I play my DK all the time now. All right, back in the video. I, I think this is correct. Uh, depending on what potions you run, I do think his back bar is also correct. So um, we're not going to sit through the, the whole back bar rotations. Um, you guys know what it does. Uh, we'll go over to ultimate. I mean, ultimates. There's only like three ultimates in the entire game that you want to use on DK. So we're going to skip this section. Sorry for the, the, the click three rate, Deltia. So, a bunch of weapon damage. See what his rotation is. In. But right as I Rambo in, I'm going to get this up. I actually hit Race Against Time. You can see there's a lot of buffs to get managed. Race Against Time gives you 12 seconds of uh, minor force. You got minor. Uh, so my concerns immediately, this is a, uh, a, a hybrid, but the, the, his highest resource pool is only 22k. Um, that leads me to believe that these tool tips are going to be pretty low. Um, I try to always have like around 30k because sustain is, is really tough. Uh, so I, I don't know, maybe his weapon damage is through the roof, but I see plate break Amara's ball sack, um, so probably for not. for 20 seconds, you got heal and receive, and you got your armor buff. You're ready to go. So as I close the distance, typically I proc that enchant, and I fully charge heavy attack in, in between doing flames of oblivion. So I'll do a flames of oblivion, charge in, and I got my three stacks after a noxious whip. And this is kind of when I see what the opponent's gonna do. You see... So uh, th that's a really good point because when you do that, it gives you like two more seconds to kind of figure out, hey, do I want to burst? Because if you want to burst, your second round of Flames of Oblivion is going to proc as well. So it actually does do a, a decent damage. So, my number one that's a good set. on my bar, it's darkened out. The reason why is I can't stun the opponent. Um, I mean, rotation. Well, I'm more curious about the gear and tool tips. So we'll kind of watch this. Number one is the Monster Helm, good old blood spawn. I've already given you a thousand reasons why ultimate is really, really useful unless you skipped the entire video and just clicked the timestamps. How dare you? Watch the ads. So you just generate <laughs> ultimate and get more physical resistance. I have YouTube premium, I'll watch ads. Tanky and you can lean on corrosive armor. Makes a lot of sense for the Dragonite. Couple different options here. Um, I, I mean, he's pretty much running the build, right? Mars, Ball Sack, Play Break. Blood spawn. I don't know his mythic item yet though. And you always have Balorgs for big, huge saving yeah, up for Balor's 500 nice. ultimate nukes. Again, when I'm playing one VX or you know in a small group, blood spawn. Good old blood spawn from Spindle Clutch Two is the way to go. Back bar sets. You have a bunch of different defensive sets. No, there's a new busted set, Mara's Bomb. I actually tried it on my Dragonite. Yes, it was cheesy. I could sit there and face tank 15 people, <laughs> kind of like Iron's Blood. It's supposed to get nerfed September uh, 5th, so pretty soon, depending on when you watch supposed to get nerfed we'll, we'll see what zoss does i'm i'm skeptical watch this video so i stop using i just use good old daedric trickery when i'm solo Day <laughs> your trickery morrowind set craftable it's been working for over a year the reason why daedric trickery is so strong is you can stack buffs on top of each other so major heroism with the dragonite is what you're really going for yeah that that is true troy yeah it's like Group content and solo content is totally, totally different game in ESO. Totally different. You have a frost staff on your back bar, so you can just proc it. You'll see this little light up golden effect with little um, arrows or something that goes around you. That's when a major buff is proc. So you can stack major protection on top of major heroes and on top of major expedition. Down. Yeah, the 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 twenty percent chance of getting major heroism is pretty nice. Um, I would suggest kind marchers though, to be honest, instead of trickery. Side is you don't get a pick. Really, you're using this for that heroism to build ultimates and feed the corrosive armor, feed those big, huge AOE kills. So you, you can do, uh, you can also do a wretched vitality for your sustain. So you don't have to worry about running uh, smoke bear haunts, you know, or whatever. Um, so you could do that for your back bar. And then uh, you actually have potions that give you re resistances as well. I don't know if you guys know about that. So um and maybe I'll talk about that in the uh, the next build video. So why not have the small group, someone running this on your back bar, cast it, bang, flip over, and everyone gets a really nice benefit. Not as tanky as data trickeries for solo and BGs, I don't use it. If I'm playing with a couple other people, a couple other sweats, man, repeat I'll throw the this on, bang, you cast it, like you that minor man, result come on. anyways, and go to town. Someone told me this video was trash. He's actually been on point with everything he's talking about so far. That he's going to all all the major points. He, he he understands the DK. He understands the sets. Um, I mean, his tooltips probably a little rough, but you know. 
All right, now we got to cover Big the mythics. Deeps. I'm sorry, but you got to use a mythic. Sea Serpent Coil is way overtuned right now. It prevents getting ganked. Gives yo, you major yo, 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 don't, don't, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't you dare say overtuned. Stop it. This is the only thing that makes Magsork viable right now. Do not nerf Sea Serpent's Coil. Magsork will be a non existent class, okay? Y you have to have damage, man, this patch. Do not nerf this fucking mythic. Yo, Jules, thank you so much for the five dollars, dude. Let's go. Time to destroy some little chubby cheek kids. Okay, Dr. Disrespect. Yo, let's go, brother. <laughs> Yo, thank you so much for the five, man. I'll, I'll do some push-ups here after the video. Remind me, please. So it's basically two five pieces in a one piece mythic. Though it does snare you for a bit, kind of slow you down. So that's kind of annoying to get a hold of. You can kind of use a different couple options to get around that, but it's absolutely fantastic. Say it, say be hopping Delta, say it. I would recommend Markin's Ring of Majesty. This is from the Deadlands. Yeah, that's pretty good too. It's just a really good set and forget mythic, give you about 200 weapon or spell damage and a bit of armor. So fantastic. Torque is actually very, very good for resource sustain especially on a hybrid don't run it completely toward. carries your resource sustain and if you wanted to go a dot pressure build and not listen to anything i just told you for the last 20 minutes malakath mans of a brutality but why would you want to do that i'm always right it's my youtube channel just ask me and then so yes and no when you run five medium like with the setup that he had I mean, he's probably sitting around 18, 19% crit chance tops. And that's what that's, you know, maybe 20% crit with, with flames of oblivion on his front bar. So when your crit chance is like 10%, um, it may not be a bad option to run Malakath. So just, just keep that in mind. All right. So let's go through the traits here. Um, chest reinforce. Okay. Heavy, um, head heavy. So he's running, got uh, three medium. Three heavy, one light. I don't know about that. Um, if, if you're running, well, if you're running Daedric Turkey, I can understand that. But Mar Mars Bomb, you definitely don't want to run uh, too much heavy. So, um, I mean, the weights are okay, um, I suppose. I personally don't think you need that much health. Um, I think you could drop a couple of the heavy and substitute medium to get a little bit more damage, but. Um, you know, when it comes to traits, yeah, well fitted, reinforced, sturdy. I, I I disagree with sturdy. If you're in open world, you unless you're like specifically doing like a bash crow or some sort of like perma block build. I mean, I don't know. I I think sturdy is just kind of like a wasted trait. I might be wrong. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of sort of more DKs out there that, that stack all into sturdy. But uh, personally, I, I really don't care too much for it. I manage my you know stamina just fine. So I I would go with well fitted especially if you're running sea serpent squirrel you have to roll dodge quite a bit to, to be hop so uh, weapons wise a nern hone sharpened um agree and disagree nern hone yes but i still think charge is very very good um sharpen really doesn't give you that much more damage probably like three percent more damage overall um so you know maybe three and a half i really have charge which is going to amplify you know your status effects a lot i mean they did nerf it even more i still think charge would probably be a better option uh glyph wise flame and poison uh poison i agree with the flame enchantments um i actually kind of agree with because he doesn't have any uh, flame damage abilities on the build so every time he light attacks and uh, the flame damage procs, it will always, pretty much always apply the brain stats effect. So you'll get a thousand free, uh, free magic back. So yeah, I agree with that. Poison add, not so much. I, I would probably change poison to, uh, to shock personally, because you have enough like poison on the build. You have noxious breath. You have, uh, actually it's just noxious breath. Okay. So yeah, so maybe poison might be good. Never mind. I lied. I staff agree with again, just so you can proc your weapon damage enchantment and much, much more often. Um, I'm not a fan of Swift. I, I've never been a fan of Swift. I feel that you should, if you're going to go Swift, you might as well just bolster your, your weapon damage even more uh, to get more healing. Um, 7% is not really going to do it for you, man. I, I don't think that's going to save you in any situation. 14% between the two. I mean, would you rather have like 300 more weapon damage or would you rather have, you know, 14% movement speed extra? I mean, I guess speedy boys would like it, you know, different play styles. But personally, I, I just want to go with the raw stats just so I can do as much damage as much healing as possible. 
Um, standard recovery infused. Yeah, I mean, the rest of that was good. Yeah, this is solid. This is solid. The 330 is only if I'm running a mitigation back bar like Ice Staff or Sword and Shield. Otherwise, I run six well-fitted, one reinforced in the chest, and there you have I spoke too soon. Yo, Delta is smart, guys. I mean, this is... I can't complain with this video. This... This is a... This is pretty good. I've had prismatic glyphs on the big piece of head, chest, and legs, stamina on the rest. And then you got some options on plague break. So three body pieces that are medium in the weapons. Now I'm running maces and I just told you that you get 100% penetration. So why am I running maces? Well, the reason I run maces, even if I pop corrosive armor, it's just reliable damage outside of corrosive armor. So I experimented. And, 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 and this is what plagues me when I'm sleeping. It's like, okay, do you want to run swords? which are going to be less damaged than the running maces. But during your corrosive, you'll be doing a lot more damage. So you have to kind of weigh the option in your head. I get asked this constantly. Like what traits, like what, what, what one hand do you want to run? And it, it just depends on your play style. Do you want to use corrosive more? Run swords. Do you want to leap more? Use maces. Jewelry, extremely important to go with two swift or more, especially if you're using Sea Serpent's Coil. It is a dramatic increase in your survivability. Uh, I can't even express how good a uh, swift is, especially if you gold out the jewelry. If you're a sweat and you really want to take your performance seriously, PvP, you will get a lot of value for a swift. Depends on your bar setup. If you're running Race Against Time, you might as well go swift. I mean, you can. Um, the way I look at it, is the DK is not a speedy boy class. So I doubled down on tank ability and, and you know damage. I mean, that's just me. Yes, you can turn it into a speedy boy class, but you are sacrificing a lot of damage. And running this build, like his build right now solo, you will not you will not burst anyone. I can tell by a set pulls, I can tell you that he's gonna have probably like six thousand weapon damage fully procked with a uh, continuous attack. You're you're not you're not gonna kill anyone solo. I mean you may, but um, you gotta have damage with sea serpents. Yeah, you would. Okay, so everyone's been asking me about no proc build. Um, Mark the Pry, yes. Which knight's uh, defiance? I actually don't know what that does, but I definitely Pariah, Magna Incarnate. Yeah, Torque. I don't know. Um, yeah, de definitely Pariah. If you could run no CP, like hundred percent Pariah or uh, Fortified Brass, and then the other set. Yeah, whatever. It depends on your sustain. In case you want to run that, I just recommend uh, Mark of the Prior and Witch Knight's Defense with Torque. Torque actually still works in no proc CP because, of course, a mythic would work in no proc PB. So I'm not sure if Gaze's Sithis also works in no proc. Um, Torque does. Um, I know before that Gaze's Sithis did also work in no proc. So someone correct me on that if uh, I'm mistaken or they fix it. PvP. Now let's cover the miscellaneous parts of the build. I would recommend Nord by far as the racial choice. Reason why? It has a unique bonus to give back ultimate when taking damage. No other. Let me read this for a second. Uh, it, when you take damage, you gain five ultimate. This effect can occur every 10 seconds. So effectively, every minute you get 50 ult. That's actually pretty good. So yeah, Nord or Imperial would be best on his build, 100% other race has this again this is why you're centering your build on building ultimate everything to generate ultimate to get in corrosive quicker to add to that massive damage and survivability yes other races work but nord is a dramatic increase in your survivability and just being an absolute nightmare two other races that are pretty good are imperial so it has some reduced costs you have some good max hp very tanky very easy to survive on it Easier to get your ultimate, not necessarily generally. Need the Dark Elf for Bretton, another actually. Another one is Orc, which is very orc. fast. I like yeah. that. And I do have another Stam DK that I, I guess I have two, because why wouldn't every meathead have two Stamina Dragonites that are super aggressive? And I like my Orc. But I always go back to my Nord and Board, because the ultimate generation, I just feel so tanky. The Orc does feel quicker, though. So keep that in mind if you like, uh, don't like the Sea Serpent Coil issue. For attributes, highly recommend around 30 to 32,000 HP. When you first start this build, if you're struggling with dying, just stack. I mean, that's, 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 that's really good point. Uh, the rule of thumb is like 30, 30, run like 30K resistances and also uh, 30K health. Uh, if you're starting out, you're trying a new class and you'll, you'll, you'll do great or you'll do better. <laughs>
back all attributes into health. It's better than dying. But get to around 30 to 32,000. It's a tank meta, so you can go a little bit lower. And on a Nord, typically I go about 32 health, 32 stamina, zero magic. Munda Stone, I go with the Thief, so I increase critical strike chance. There's a lot of pressure that you can provide with just spiky burst Thief. Um... Thief can work. Um, I've actually considered putting Thief on my DK as well. Um, it definitely can work. Damage and right around 30% critical running maces with a lot of pen is a pretty solid all around build. So, again, you wouldn't run this if you ran Malakath, but then you'd be disregarding the entire I haven't video, tried Agony which, yet, you know, digital. My not bad, the first dude. First time on YouTube, trust me. Champion points. So, you got a bunch of flex options here, but a cult of overload. I play battlegrounds a lot where there's no champion points, and frankly, I don't like champion points in PvP, but a cult of overload allows you when you apply a status effect to basically blow people up. I like champion points because of this this passive occult overload, and that's the only reason I like CP. <laughs> he did so good on the video. I wish he would have tossed up the CP passes up here. Um, this is a mistake I make. I'll, I'll get like two thirds through a video, and then I'll stop doing like pictures and stuff. Uh, I really wish he would put pictures up here because, you know, I'm I, I'm a degenerate. I, I like pictures. Finesse, believe it or not. Uh, again, we're going a lot about crit, especially crit healing. So you, do, you forget that it does a lot of crit healing. So that's why it's very valuable if you have about 30% crit or higher. Moving on to the red tree. Ready spaghetti. Celerity. Increased movement speed. It's a must. Fortified for increased armor. And then two that I app. Um, on his build, yeah, celerity is a must. But if you're planning on running Sea Serpent, don't, don't do celerity. Pain's Refuge. We don't have a cleanse. I'm not running Mara's Balm on this. So it's going to increase our damage reduction per negative status. Even with Mars Bomb, I would still suggest the CP. It's a, it's very overtuned. The fact so people are still playing a lot of dots, and you're gonna punish them if you're solo. By the more they apply to you, the tanky you're gonna get. Now we're moving on to the consumables. Something I highly recommend is Smoked Bear Haunch. It is incredibly expensive, but you really need resource sustain for both stamp. I will disagree here. Um, of all the things in the video, okay, since he's doing a stamina version of this, okay, I agree. But for you guys watch this channel, if you do Magicka, do not stack into recovery. Stack into cost reduction. Okay. One infused cost reduction if you're running five light. Two infused cost reductions if you're running medium and or heavy. And your sustain will just, just carry itself. You won't even have to worry about it. I promise. Stamina and magic and smoke bear haunch will get you that along with the most max HP. A cheap alternative is Jewels of Misru. So this is a little less HP, about 400, and a little less recovery at roughly about 50, but it's basically one one gazillionth of the cost. I have tried running max, um, you know, Bewitch Sugar School food, max stat food. I so see, here's the thing. So the, the, the question about why not using Celerity on Sea Servant's Coil, um, there's, there's no reason for you to try to counteract that negative effect you have to invest so heavily into doing that so you would have to put on race against time you'd have to run too swift and celerity to completely cancel it out and then like what are you even doing you're just canceling it out so, so you're losing so much damage by just canceling out that snare when you guys you know the channel you know i'm going to tell you to be hop Practice the fuck out of bee hopping. If my old man hands can do it, I know you guys can too. And that way, you don't have to worry about the snare to begin with, and you can also stack into damage, since you're going to be in like 6 wolf fitted anyway. I think it's complete garbage for this. I would much rather have smoke bear haunch or jewels. Now, potions. Um, I have a gazillion different potion options, so it just depends on what you're running. Tripods are just the best to go with, because the crown store has them, and you'll get them for lock. Um, potions wise, yes, tripods are good. That's something everyone has access to. But if you want the best potions, you, you need the heroism potions, which act like a tripod. But instead of the uh, the major fortitude and the health bump that it gives you, it gives you minor heroism for the entire duration. You make those by Dragon's Rum, Dragon's Blood, and Columbine. Login rewards, and so if you just sit on a bunch of login rewards, they're very, very easy. It gives everything that you want, plus recovery with it. I also run immovable potions. The issue with the removable, movable is you don't have the magic recovery component with it, or if you do have the right. magic recovery, you don't right. really have the stamina recovery component. But that's going to allow you to charge in Rambo in without getting stunned. So if you're playing in groups, I switch to that. Because usually someone provides a little bit of resource sustain when I'm playing in a group. Good, good way to charge in. Back bar for uh, poisons, I run escapist poisons. It's basically a control thing. You can light attack and like kind of lock someone in on your back bar. With um, these are really good. 
Uh, these are actually really good. Uh, I forget how to make these. I have some in my inventory. Uh, these are probably the best poisons in the game. And then there's also poisons that, that drain uh, power from your opponent, gives it to you, and gives you a nice little bump as well. I forget what those are called. I, I think Digital actually knows them in chat. He suggested them. All right, gang. Windy video. Of course, I explained a gazillion things. Hope you got something out of this. I mean, I played this like a massive amount. PCNA, PCU. Is it the best build out there? I, I don't know. It's probably a little bit off meta, but... Yo, thank you for the sub, man. If you're like you. into duels or if you're into open world, you're into 1vx, 2vx. It's fantastic. I just love the aggressive playstyle. Every time I go to another class, outside of maybe a stand-in, I always want to come back to my Dragonite because I pop crow, so I feel like an indomitable god. I just have fun playing PvP. Will this get nerfed? Battle Roar and Crows of Armor? Maybe. But until it does, I still think the Dragonite is number one in S tier, and I hope you got something out of this. If you did, click that like, click that subscribe. Leave me a comment and come check me out on twitch.tv slash gaming. I'm amazing. Just ask my mom. Thanks for watching. Um, that's a really good video. Uh, that, that was a pretty top tier video. Um, again, the damage might be lacking in solo content, but I mean, if you just want to pick up Dragonite and kind of go with it, I mean, that, that was a, a really good video. He explained, he pretty much touched on all the high points um i don't see anything wrong with this video people tell me how to watch it that it was a joke but i i uh, i actually disagree i'm not just saying that because i'm dick riding delty i'm saying that because it was it was a good video um i don't think i could explain things much better i mean sure there's a lot you know a lot more advanced mechanics that you know you should know as a dragon knight which i'm going to do a video on this weekend by the way but uh yeah, it's a it's a really good video. Yeah, go like and sub to uh, to Deltia boy.